What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be talking about formulas and syntax in Revit and also some uh, if statements. So we're going to be going dangerously close to programming, not really, but anyway you're going to learn how to do some math in Revit. But before I get started I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot and if you haven't already I suggest you subscribe because I make tutorials like this every day and follow me on social media if you tag me in your posts or send me images of your work i will share it with the world but anyway let's get into Revit. so uh, i'm going to be talking about uh, formulas and this is concerning mostly uh, Revit families and here i am on the Revit products uh, website. It's actually uh, Autodesk Knowledge. And uh, here uh, I've got a couple of pages opened up and this is uh, like the valid formula syntax and abbreviations uh, page. And uh, if we look through this page, as you can see here, uh, you've got, well, exactly what the what this says. Uh, so you've got your addition, subtraction, multiplication, and, and much more. And here uh, after this, uh, you get like what's the sign you should use. So of course for addition is plus, then for subtraction is minus, for multiplication is the asterisk, which uh, when I was getting started with Revit, I always thought it was an X and I was always frustrated, frustrated because it didn't work. Uh, another important one for uh, exponential, uh, use one of these small signs and you get the point. You can go to this website and you get all of the all of the syntax. And I'm going to be including the link to this website, of course, in the description of this video. Uh, but uh, something more important, or I guess more interesting, and what's going to be the topic of today's tutorial is this conditional statements in formulas. So you've got formulas for your families and you can use these conditional statements. Now, again, as I said, this is getting dangerously close to programming and don't worry, we're not going to be doing anything too complex. But here, as you can see, you can use these if statements. And so if the length is smaller than 3000 millimeters, then use 200 millimeters for maybe that parameter. And if it is larger, then I guess uh, you would go with 300. So th that's just something you would uh, th that's just something you would use for families. And I'm going to be showing you how to use one of these if statements in an actual uh, like table with chairs families. So let me just go over here into Revit, and here we've got a table, and let's add some chairs, and let's use an if statement. But first, let me explain what I'm trying to do here. So uh, we've got a table, and I did this table as a part of like a beginner family tutorial. A link will be in the description as well hopefully so you can check it out but uh, I, I did this table and if I go here to the family types and open up the family types dialog we've got some uh, types so or with names so we've got this bedside table so that's like a short 40 by 40 by 40 uh, size table then we've got a club table uh, which is a bit larger. So if I hit apply, as you can see, it's a bit larger, but uh, it retains the same height. Then we can go to desk. And if I hit apply for the desk, uh, it's considerably larger. So, or actually it's, I think it's the same as for the club table. Okay, no, it's a bit larger, but also it's uh, higher. And for the table table uh, when I hit apply it's it's a, it has the same height but again it's a bit larger so uh, what I want to do with this family is I want to create a formula or a statement uh, where if I'm here and uh, if this is set to bedside table or club table I don't want to have any chairs but if this gets set up as a desk table or as a desk or as a table I want to have chairs so for that we need to be using an if statement. So let me just close out of this for now and let's go into reference level and let's add those chairs. First you need to add chairs as families. Uh, so how do you do that? Well you go to the insert tab, you find load family. Uh, I'm just going to drop back a folder to use the metric, uh, metric library. Uh, go to furniture seating uh, and we've got this simple chair so it's like the simplest one so that's the one that I'm going to be using and to just uh, open that up and then go to create uh, component 
and let's place this uh, family. So we'll just spin it around by using the space key and just do one here like that and one here like that. And then you can select it, uh, hit MM for mirror with pick axis, pick this axis, do the same thing here, select this one, MM, pick axis, there we go. So we've got these chairs and uh, before we create parameters, I like to lock them in place so they don't move around unnecessarily. So just go with AL for a line, so you select the middle one, you select this thing and you lock it in place, you select the middle line, you select the middle of the chair, locked in place. Do the same thing here. Select this, this, locked in place, middle line, middle of the chair, locked in place. So they're all locked now to these, uh, like this uh, cross uh, with reference planes, but we also like to control or to constrain uh, their, uh, uh, the, how far they are away from the desk. So you do that by adding another uh, dimension. So you just go with DI for uh, dimension. So you go from this end edge to the middle of the chair, place it here, lock it in place. Again, from the end of the desk to the middle of the chair, place it wherever, lock it in place. And we repeat the same process for these chairs. So you just lock them in place. And of course you don't have to use like the edge of the desk, you can you can use, yeah, here accidentally I used this line, but it doesn't matter, it's still locked in place. And if we were not going to be changing that parameter, it's okay, it can stay that way. Okay, so now we need to make sure that uh, these chairs only appear uh, sometimes, but not always. Uh, so to do that, uh, you just select all four chairs, you just call the control key, and if you want to remove from selection, you uh, hold the shift key. So shift key removes, uh, control uh, adds to selection. Okay, so once we've added all of these chairs to selection, you go here to the visibility, or the graphics in the properties panel and for visible it's turned on but you also have this little square here and it says associate family parameters so if I hit that as you can see here I can add another parameter and we've got none here so we don't have any extra parameters to use so let's create one and let's call this one chairs yeah I'm creative and just hit OK and let's go to the properties uh, or sorry family types dialog and here as you can see we've got this chairs dialog or chairs uh, par parameter and now we want to set it up so it only appears it's only turned on uh, when we're at desk or table and when we're at bedside table or club table I want this to be off because if I turn this on as you can see it looks quite silly so how do you do that? Well, uh, let's go to the table and uh, what you need to do is you need to create a new statement here and we're going to associate it with the height because you can see, as you can see height over here, it's uh, uh, the height is the main like difference between the bedside table and the club table and the desk and the table. So here it's like 40 and this is 78. So I'm just going to uh, go over here and just type in if and then open parentheses oops, open parentheses and then type in height. So, or you can uh, maybe copy that. Uh, that's usually the better part. So it needs to be the same, the same, exactly the same that we have here. And let's say height is greater than, and let's go with like 70. And then uh, we go comma and here we can add millimeter or centimeter but you can leave it just at 70 it doesn't matter so if height is greater than 70 then and now uh, you need to have something that says true and something that says false now the problem is you can't really type in like yes or no unfortunately so if I go here and say yes and then uh, nope and then close parentheses and hit enter it's going to say that it, this is not a valid parameter so you need to type in something that uh, Revit will read as true for uh, this, for yes, and false for no. So for true, let's uh, type in a true statement. So I'm just going to be typing in something true, which is two is greater than one. And for no, I'm just going to type in something false. One is greater than two. So we've got something that's true and we've got something that's false. And if I hit apply, as you can see now this turns off. And if I go here to the table 
and now chairs are on because it's greater than 70 centimeter this is 78 same thing stands for desk it's still turned on it's grayed out because you can't change it. it it's dependent on the formula but as you can see over here it's still checked but if i go to club table it's turned off and if i go to bedside table it's turned off so that's how these if statements works work and that's how you program your families i guess that's just a fancy way of saying you learned one formula but anyway so that's how you use these if statements in Revit. so that's pretty much it for this tutorial and if you want to download this uh, parametric programmed family fancy thing uh, just check out my patreon first the link in the description and of course please like share and subscribe and if you have any questions comments or suggestions make sure to leave them in the comment section below thank you for watching and have a nice day